Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to have Major Horngren, Major Morgan, and Master Sergeant Davis please come up and join me on stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the 10th anniversary and all of you have been significant role players for the past forums and making the event poss possible in years past. Major Morgan, Major Horngren, and Master Sergeant Davis, could you please provide us your perspective of the importance of the Women's Leadership Forum and what it means to you? I said the enlisted person has to go first and then the eloquent officers can go after me. So I was fortunate um, to join the Women's Special Emphasis Council and participate in the planning of the Women's Leadership Forum after it was already well established, had been going for about five or six years at that point. Um, and my first ever boss, um, when I became full-time in 2006, was Command Sergeant Major Cindy Kahlberg, one of the founders of this event, along with General Clyborne and some other senior female officers who are also here today. So it's just been such an incredible honor to be a part of her legacy and the other female officers who are part of it. And then, you know, taking over for, from someone as competent as, as Major Morgan is and, and Major Horngren as well, was a little intimidating at first, to be honest. Um, but I'm happy and, and just incredibly honored to be a part of that continued legacy. Because, you know, there are challenges as a part of being a, a female leader in this organization. And not that they're any, anyone's fault necessarily, but the pressure of wanting to be a great mom uh, and a great spouse along with being a great leader is challenging because it pulls you in different directions, right? Not assimilating to your environment and being an authentic, authentic leader, authentic to who you are as a person and not assimilating to the masculine version of what you think you should be. Um, along with the pressure, the internal pressure of being one of the only females in the room sometimes and having the pressure of having to be the best there is. Um, those are all challenges that we have all experienced probably. And hopefully this event um, has been a part of building that community for you and the women in our organization so that you don't feel alone in that. And I'd love to believe that the Women's Leadership Forum has expanded your network and allowed you um, to build that, that relationships um, with the, the other women in this organization. And then, you know, professionally, there's been two times in my AGR career where I almost, you know, self-eliminated, self-disqualified from applying for a job. Um, and both of those times I was called a wimp and then did apply and did, did get those jobs. Um, so I'm here to tell you, if you work hard, you seek out mentors, and you navigate your career with intent, you don't just wait for opportunities to fall in your lap, you can achieve anything. Women in this organization can achieve anything because our leaders support us, and there's nothing stopping you from reaching your full potential. In true enlisted style, she brought notes for this, so we have something to learn from that. <laughs> So just like uh, Sergeant Davis said, I started very early on um, getting to experience the Women's Leadership Forum as it started off. I was lucky enough to get tapped in to help run as an advisor back in 2020 um, and was involved from 2020 through 23 and then a little bit as need be when they ask for help from time to time now. So it's, it's a wonderful community to be a part of. From where it started to where it is today, it started as a good opportunity to grow our skills and to mentor each other and network so that we could get a little bit of variety on what we're doing and just find out that we weren't alone, just like Sergeant Davis said. Um, where we've tried to take it in the last few years is to continue challenging the norms that we have faced and to bring that experience to the table across both our branches, but also to remember that it's not just a women's forum, it's a leadership development forum. And part of that is understanding how we integrate together as women leaders with male counterparts and as male leaders with women under our command. So bringing that understanding of how we communicate, how we lead with different styles, and then challenging the struggles that we continue to face so that we don't become complacent. So by integrating in with this community and integrating in with this entire team, being able to continue bringing those conversations that you all see day to day to the forefront for our senior leaders who are all in the front row here and that they support these conversations and continue to grow our communities and make our organizations even better. All right, so those are really hard to follow. Um, thank you. <laughs> So I'll take a little piece from Ambassador Davis. I got involved in the Women's Leadership Forum after I saw some really good examples, Lieutenant Colonel Witt, um, 
amongst others, I can't think of other, there's a, a, a quorum of very competent female leaders that really kind of teed off, I think, the 2017 Women's Leadership Forum. After that, I was really intrigued. I was like, what is this thing? What is this opportunity? Um, so I stepped up the next year and I continue to help be a, a pretty significant planner to it uh, from 2018 to 2022 and then passed off the hat over to a couple other folks because uh, reaching burnout. <laughs> it's a lot of work, uh, it takes a lot of passion and also takes a lot of self-reflection about what is the purpose of the forum? What are we doing? Are we, you know, there's a, there's a quasi balance of both education and information um, informing the audience, you know, the people that are, have the perspective that they've experienced something that's unique to the organization or that they can bring their feelings and experiences to help grow the organization. But it's also intended to expand it to the, the, more the entirety of the organization for growth and development. So really, so that we can sort of, uh, by inch by inch, have some sort of culture change, right? The, the purpose of the forum really is for some uh, uh, microscopic, uh, iterative culture change so that the problems that we have, these microaggressions that we see and we feel, um, eventually are not as significant or hopefully are gone, right? Um, so th the purpose of the forum has evolved over the years. Um, I just want to recognize, I do want to stop and recognize the progression and the growth that we've actually experienced. So over the last, the course of the last 10 years, I think we've made a significant difference. So I do, I do hopefully, I do uh, wholeheartedly believe that. And I want to thank all the, you know, the female leaders I see in front of me that have been a part of the Women's Leadership Forum beyond us three, right? Have, you guys have contributed, you have made a really big impact to the organization. And we wouldn't be here today at the 10th anniversary um, having the same discussions. We would have been, you know, uh, you know having much more, uh, uh, like, minor, microscopic or less significant discussions about, you know, the microaggressions would be much larger issues, right? So we're, we're, we're grateful for being or lucky to be the place in the juncture that we are. So recognizing the progress that we've made and then trying to elevate that now to a larger just leadership development discussion I think is important. Um, bringing allies and champions into the room to have a broader discussion of how do we then integrate uh, the progress and the recognition that we have. Okay, we know we know, need uh, competent female leaders and we know we need to develop them to have uh, a lot of capabilities that's equivalent, right, that it's earned and not just seen as a quota, and then how do we elevate that into the LDP program so that we can have something that's really broad brushstroke and educating the larger populace of how we do this. And really, I think it gets to um, our creation counterparts about uh, gender integration, gender education, um, and how we bring uh, those diverse perspectives to the forefront of everyone's minds. Um, so I do appreciate uh, everyone being here today, the really big turnout. Um, I do want to also, final plug, uh, encourage if you're a young soldier, if you found this or not even a young soldier, new to this forum or have been coming for many years and are inspired to try to make an impact to the organization. Um, I hope that, I think most of us are like this, they want to make, leave the organization better than we found it. That's how I try to approach every day. Um, try to make an impact and improve the org organization as much as I can that, that given day. So if, if you are like-minded, I would highly encourage you try to be um, sign up to become a member of the Women's uh, Special Emphasis Council. That'll introduce you to, uh, you know, the, the different communication opportunities for volunteerism. It's not just this forum. They, they do multiple events throughout the year. This is the, the anchor event for, for, the, for the council. Um, and then consider being part of the planning committee next year as well. Um, so you can have that impact and your voice can be heard. So it really is a, um, an opportunity for you to stand up and, and help continue to make the uh, to make progress in the organization. So, thank you. Don't leave yet, ladies. You can't get away yet. Yeah. At this time, I now ask for Major General Clyborne to please join these ladies on stage. Additionally, can we have Lieutenant Colonel Witt, Lieutenant Colonel Gertz, and Major Davis, please join us on stage. Major General Clyborne would like to present a token of gratitude for all your past work as Women Leadership Forum planners and for being supporters and advocates for this event.
Thank you, ladies. Now I would ask Major General Clyborne to join us back on stage, and as well as General Mankey to also join us, as we would like to recognize our Croatian partners. Brigadier General Gorosic and Master Sergeant Horvat, would you please join us on stage? The Minnesota National Guard and Women's Leadership Forum would like to thank you both for being here today to speak with the attendees and provide more information about the Croatian military. We appreciate you making this trip to Minnesota to attend our Women's Leadership Forum and hope to see you back in the future. I now would like to introduce our next speaker, Major General Joanna Clyborne, who assumed duties as Adjutant, Assistant Adjutant General, Joint Force Headquarters, Minnesota National Guard, St. Paul, Minnesota, on June 1st, 2019. She provides guidance, leadership, support, and oversight for 13,000 soldiers and airmen and advises the Office of the Adjutant General on matters pertaining to organizational priorities. General Clyborne is dual-hatted officer, and on 19 January 2021, she assumed additional responsibilities as the Deputy Commanding General, Army National Guard for the Cyber Center of Excellence in Fort Gordon, Georgia. Enlisting in 1989 as a technical drafting specialist, General Clyborne earned her commission as an engineer officer in 1992. General Clyborne has served in numerous staff positions throughout her career and has led soldiers at all levels from platoon to brigade command. She holds branch qualifications as an engineer, military intelligence, and human resources officer. A combat veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom, General Clyborne deployed as Deputy of Military Intelligence of the 34th Infantry Red Bull Division, United States Division South in Iraq. In her civilian occupation, she is the founding partner of the Shakopee based law firm Brecky Clyborne and Ribich LLC, where she focuses on family law. General Clyborne is a fellow of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers and in February of 2018 until, until January of 2019, General Clyborne was appointed on a short-term assignment to serve as Commissioner and Chief Information Officer for the State of Minnesota. 
General Clyborne has served in the National Guard for more than 31 years. She holds the distinction of being the first woman to command a brigade and the first woman to achieve the ranks of both Brigadier General and Major General in the Minnesota National Guard. She is the champion of the Women's Special Emphasis Council and has vested interest in creating equal opportunities for all service members. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Major General Clyborne. The day that I actually do this, the technology doesn't work right, correct? <laughs> so you've often heard me say that service is, service to others is the rent that you pay for your room here on earth. It's by Muhammad Ali. And I think it's really important because service to others is not lost on anyone in this room, right? Um, but one of the things I was asked to do was to give you some perspectives today as we wrap up this event. Um, so let's start with leadership. In honesty, and I, I've said this quite often, if I shine, it's because I'm surrounded by bright stars. The people around me have allowed me to bask in their reflection to make events like this work, to allow me to do things that I never thought could ever be done. Much was made over my promotion to Major General. Um, and to be honest, I still cringe a lot when I hear the first of something, simply because it feels wrong. You see, I do understand that only 1% of all officers get to wear a star. I have not spent the time to crunch the numbers to know what percent get a second star or how many of those are female. But I can reasonably tell you very, very few do. In the Minnesota National Guard, we are at 24% for our junior enlisted and airmen as female. Just less than 7% of its senior members are female. And while we strive to increase those numbers, I know that the Guard is not far off from corporate America. A CNBC industry survey recently found that only 24 of the companies listed in the Fortune 500 had a female CEO. I believe across industries, we are entering, however, in a time that the importance of female leadership is becoming increasingly obvious. Having a clear sense of value and ensuring nurturing relationships is one of those values. It's key to shared empowerment of women across the board. Together and one step at a time, we are changing what it means to be a leader and what a leader looks like. However, most of the time, I see it as I'm just a soldier who happens to be female. Because at the end of the day, just like everyone else, I just want to do my job and I want to do it well. Because if I do my job well, then I have prepared the next generation for the demands of the future strategic level requirements, while simultaneously helping our soldiers and airmen develop into the leaders that we need today. And while I have achieved much greatness in my own personal journey, it is not the end of the road, and it's not the end of the story. You see, if I as a senior leader have not ensured the development in the conditions of upward mobility and opportunity regardless of background, regardless of ethnicity, gender, or orientation, then I believe as a senior leader I have failed. The leader I was 34 years ago, when I joined just barely two weeks after turning 17, is not the leader I am today. Leadership is about continuing to grow and to develop no matter how old or experienced you are. So today I'm going to give you three tips, but to start off, if you remember nothing else from today, and some of you heard me say this before, always remember that we are given rank to serve and not to be served. Whether you are a senior leader in our military or in corporate America in the C-suite, 
I believe that failing to remember why you've been given the authority or the responsibility or the rank you have to serve our privilege and our nation has led to the failing of more than a few of our great senior leaders. And if we view ourselves as servants, then we can make extraordinary contributions to our world without having to be extraordinary ourselves. So that takes me to tip number one. Building diverse and knowledgeable teams is critical to organizational success and to your own success. I don't care if you have doctor in front of your name, Esquire behind it, or if you have four stars on your shoulders. The leader I am today is because I was willing and still am willing to allow someone else to help lead, to teach me even though I may outrank them. I learned very early not necessarily to buy into the persona of someone who perceives to have it all or know it all, but sometimes the person who has the key is often the most junior person in the room. I've also learned when building successful teams, you have to have diversity. Contrast is beautiful in artwork, but in real life, if you are the contrast in the room, it can be daunting and uncomfortable. You have to include people who look different than you, that think different than you, who challenge the status quo, that are outspoken. I realize this is hard to do. An old battalion commander of mine used to say, no one likes change but a wet baby. It's probably right. Because change requires us to look at things differently. It forces us to look at problems differently, to challenge our conventional way of thinking and the way we do things. Getting more and more women and minorities into position of leadership requires us to rethink how we've traditionally done business and whether those obstacles are there in place for good reason or artificial barriers. So how do you do this? Well, first off, start being around people who are different. This can be super uncomfortable, because we tend to like what is familiar, what looks like us, what, what sort of understands our own path and thinking. Right? Those folks we can identify with because, well, frankly, they look like us in the mirror. But you know what? That's where you miss your opportunities. That's where you miss the ability to expand your circle of knowledge the ability to listen without judgment. And when you do have members that are diverse on your team, you have to seek them out. You have to mentor them and you have to challenge them. Understanding what motivates each person is different and how to mentor each person is entirely different. And you have to, without question, eliminate without any thought of reservation, any dead weight in your organization that stands in the way of any member of your team reaching their full potential because of their diversity. To be a mentor, you also have to be a champion. Mentors are great, but you have to be a champion and you have to have a champion. I got where I am today not just because I work really, really hard, that's part of the factor. But I had mentors later in my career, but I had champions where it mattered. Someone who was willing to help showcase my abilities and drove those who made decisions to notice me. If you are a senior leader and you truly want to affect change, be that path maker. Believe it or not, even part of this event in this organization, I am aware that there were folks here in Medtronic who tried to make this Women's Leadership Forum happen in the very beginning, who were shot from the very start and were told no. No, you can't have it here. No, it can't be done. Until someone took a chance and spoke up and went to a senior member of the Medtronic team. And then the doors began to open. And what previously people had said was impossible, for some reason, became possible. I'm also aware of the efforts of our own team organizationally. Colonel Fix, where is he? I don't even see him, but he's somewhere here. Who, it is really hard in the joint staff to change our training schedules, because we're like, we're not even cats, we're like kittens, all in shiny objects running in different directions. 
But he did a 180 and changed the training schedule and made it very clear that the expectation that the joint staff would have the opportunity to be here and adjusted that schedule. He was a path maker to ensure that people could take advantage of this opportunity. It takes effort to create success, both yours and that of others. Which takes me to tip two. Acknowledge that there's no such thing as true balance. Give others grace, but especially yourself. For me, there have been many days and weekends away and early mornings and late nights and deployments and school and three jobs. And it all takes away time from the family and it takes its toll. It takes away time from my civilian employer. Because, well, as women, it's part of my job, but it's also self-inflicted because we try to do everything, to be everywhere. Never say no to anything, right? Most successful leaders I know do not settle for the bare minimal effort. That's how they got where they were. However, if you are a female, doing the minimum is simply a luxury you are not afforded, ever. We pretend that this is not true, and lots of our peers will tell us that is just perceived. I call the BS flag, because from my black hole, that is not true. Society, however, made me believe that I could do it all. To me, I believe balance was like a seesaw. And if you managed it all right, that seesaw would remain perfectly balanced. If I could only be better at scheduling, at time management or delegation, I could be super in all the roles that I hold, all the hats in the community that I wear. Super lawyer, super mom, super soldier, super wife, super Red Cross board member, you name it, all the things that we're required to do. But the truth of the matter is, is I can't be super at all things at all times, and neither can you. Some days I am super mom and maybe super lawyer. Other days I am super mom and I suck at everything else. And there are times where I am a sucky mom, a sucky, sucky lawyer, and frankly a sucky soldier because I can't get it all together. But you know what? It's okay. No one ever told me it was okay to suck at something occasionally. We all juggle a lot of balls. Understanding what is important to you and only you and work hard not to drop those balls. I call those the glass balls. Women want to do it all because we've been in grade that we're supposed to be able to do it all. But we are also our worst enemies. Sometimes people come up to me and they say, I don't know how you do it all so well. Well, the truth is I don't. You see, you only allow people to see the window that you want them to see. You see the happiness, you see the success, you see the, the marathon running. You don't see the 3.30 in the morning wake up call. You don't see the 9.30 at night crying in tears, figuring out how am I gonna get fit at all. I'm a master at time management and calendaring no one has quite a calendar like I do, trust me. I don't even know where Camp High Camp is, but she'd tell you that's the case. <laughs> but I've never missed a deadline. I've never missed an event until recently. And I had to admit I was over my head and working hard to get back. But my type A leadership personality did not allow me to make that admission early on. So last week, I had a really, really bad week. I mean, like a really bad week. I missed a hearing, which lawyers never are supposed to do. Apparently lawyers do that routinely, I just didn't know I could do that. <laughs> um, I had to suffer the call of a judge's clerk calling me, totally embarrassed, because how could this happen to me? I am the master of the calendar. I have a stack of overdue stuff. I think there's a paralegal in this audience who knows that I owe their organization some stuff. Um, <laughs> To say I was on my wit's end, on the edge of a breakdown, would have been an understatement. 
The words I was using to describe myself and my failures were not kind. So I did what we're supposed to do. We hunt the good stuff. And I called a battle buddy, and I said, man, let me tell you about my week. And she listened. And then she said, would you talk to any of your soldiers that way? No. Would you talk to another attorney that way? No. Then why are you talking to yourself that way? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. She said, no, you wouldn't, because you would give grace to others, because that's what you do as a leader. You give grace. So why can you not give grace to yourself? Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know. So what I did is something that is not usual. I admitted that I had made mistakes. I admitted I was over my head. So why do I tell you this? I tell you this because as leaders, we only talk about the successes. We put up the smoke in mirrors. We talk about all the things we think you should be doing and how you should be doing it, but we don't talk about our failures. We don't talk about how you dust yourself off, you put a pan in place, you figure out where you went wrong, and you move forward. We don't do enough of that. And as a result, we often make people feel as if they're not adequate enough, right? Because if you could just get your shit together, you could be like Clyborne. You could do all the things she does. She wears so many hats. She manages so much on her calendar. Wow, why can't I be like that way? When I look at my male counterparts, I often think that. And then I realize, hmm, maybe it's because I'm not recognizing all the things that we do. That brings me to tip number three. The last tip is don't ever let anyone tell you no. No matter who, including yourself. Some of you heard me say this before, but always, let me repeat, always show up. If you ask me what the most single important piece of advice I wish I'd had starting out my military career would have been, it would have been Shirley Chris Holmes' statement that if they don't give you a seat at the table to bring a folding chair. I would add now that I've been at this for a while, that while you're at bringing the chair, forget that. Build your own table with an unlimited number of seats and invite everyone along on the journey. You see, women and minorities especially have not been afforded a seat at the table. One need only look at the recent sexual assault and harassment scandals that are rocking our military right now. How can we afford women to sit at the table if they can't be treated with dignity and respect, which every team member deserves regardless of their gender? But here's the fact, you cannot control others. But you know what you can control? You. You can control 100% you. No matter what day you're having, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what someone tells you, you keep showing up. Because if nothing else, you'll wear them down. It works. But I will also tell you that there's a voice in your head. And some of you heard me talk about this before. And this voice presents itself as kind to you. It says things like, don't bother. Why show up? Why try? Sometimes I have to tell mine to sternly lay by its dish. It seeks to protect you. It really is so that you don't fail. But the truth of the matter is, without failure, there's no growth. Without stumbling, you don't know how to course correct or to, to make the changes you need in your life. J.K. Rowling sums it up nicely when she says, it is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you've lived so cautiously that you might as well have not lived at all. So as you leave here today, ask yourself, what would you do if you were not afraid of failing? I do want to recognize, however, that women, and I've been told some men, but it seems to be primarily women, 
suffer what the business world calls the imposter syndrome. I have it daily. For those who don't know what the imposter syndrome is, it's where you think any day they'll figure out I don't belong here. I'm not smart enough. They'll figure out I don't know how to do this job. I'm a fake. Or as the irony is, I like to say, fake it until you make it. But even more so, when you account for the fact that I have risen to a level of success in the military that it's against the odds. Someone once told me that I could never, ever achieve this rank because I was born with the wrong parts. Pretty sure God made me the way I was supposed to be. But you know what? I didn't let them tell me no. I allowed myself to continue on that path. But it doesn't matter that I run a successful law practice or that I've achieved the rank of general or that I have titles and accolades or that I have a beautiful daughter who, despite driving me crazy, will turn this world on its head and will do amazing things. I yet continue to doubt my abilities. Why is that? Crazy. Some would tell you, as a senior leader, especially as a female, never show weakness. Ever. especially since we reside in such a heavily male-dominated field. Or as a few of my male colleagues have told me in the past, you have to have balls of steel. Well, I've learned that maybe occasionally telling the truth and lifting the veil to show vulnerabilities will allow others to see that the struggles are real and despite that, you can adapt and overcome. Maybe it shows that the leader is human. But this also requires me not to work so hard at fitting in and being one of the guys, which truthfully was critical to my survival as a young officer and as a mid-grade officer, and at times even now as a senior officer, because there were few, or when I first began, no women. And often I sit in a room where I am by myself, or maybe there might be one or two others in a room of three, 400 that are not like me. So now I've changed and shifted my focus to developing my own style and leading people. People ask, is it because you're towards the end of your career? And I always reply, there is nothing more dangerous in the world than a woman who's at the end of her career. <laughs> but that is not why. It is because I have figured out that developing my own style and developing who I am as a leader is not a gender thing. It's a persona thing. It's doing what drives you as a leader. So now my response is, I do have balls of steel. I just happen to carry mine on my chest. <laughs> So to close, Sheryl Sandberg, the CEO or now of Facebook, once summed up leadership in a single sentence. And I hope that you keep this on your leadership journey. Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts long after you're gone. Your job is to serve others so that they may achieve their highest goals so that you, in turn, will achieve yours and be the best you absolutely are destined to be. Thank you. Thank you, General Clyborne. I know you just sat down, ma'am, but we're gonna ask you to come back up to the stage. I would also ask that uh, General Mankey please join her on stage, as well as Lieutenant Colonel Robinson. Will the following individuals report to the Adjutant General, Captain Kristen Ort, Senior Master Sergeant Jessica Ferris, Master Sergeant Stephanie Malm, Sergeant First Class Daphne Pierre.
These individuals are being awarded the Army Accommodation Medal. Will all civilian and military members please stand? Attention to order. For meritorious service while serving as a pivotal member of the Minnesota National Guard 2024 Women's Leadership Forum Planning Committee from 1 October 2023 to 2 March 2024, Captain Ort, Senior Master Sergeant Jessica Ferris, Master Sergeant Malm, and Sergeant First Class Pierre demonstrated exceptional professionalism and exemplary performance that directly contributed to the overall success of the event, benefiting over 400 personnel. Their performance reflects great credit upon themselves, the Minnesota National Guard, the United States Army, and the U.S. Air Force. Thank you, ladies. Ma'am, on behalf of the Minnesota National Guard and Women's Leadership Forum Planners, we would like to present you with a token of our deepest appreciation for everything you have done for the Minnesota National Guard and the service members here today and for being the Women's Special Emphasis Council Champion. Without your dedication and support, this event would not exist, and we are forever grateful for the time and effort you put into getting this forum up and running. We also have a photo collage with signatures that have been collected throughout the course of today to commemorate the 10 year anniversary. And now we present it to you as an enduring memory of all that you have done for us. Thank you again. So I'm trying hard not to like show any emotion here because you know, apparently that's weakness or something. I don't know. Um, wow, I don't know what to say. Um, this started as part of it first started as part of Star Major Kahlberg and looking to do something for the enlisted leaders, and then it followed by four at the time junior officers, two majors, and a lieutenant, two lieutenant colonels over martinis um, at a play talking about wouldn't it be wonderful if all women could experience the same sort of mentorship and opportunities that we had lacked as we were coming up in the ranks. And it wasn't long until those majors and lieutenant colonels became colonels and then generals where we were able to work together to put this forum, to provide those opportunities what you take here today is really up to you. The events that are put for you are amazing, but the true connections, the true magic happens after you leave here, where you have the ability to call. When you have the ability to see when a posting is opened and someone did not apply, or calling ahead of time to go, why the hell have you not applied? to make sure that people are doing what they're supposed to do, to reach out to find opportunities that sometimes feel like barriers. I hope this, as most will probably know, this is my last. Um, but I am so proud of each and every one of you. And I look forward to the day that 24% will be 51%. So thank you. As we wrap up today's training, I would like to extend our appreciation to our partners who made today's possible. 
to include Medtronic and the Medtronic Veterans Network, our AV supporters, the Minnesota National Guard Public Affairs Team, and our vendors and experts who provided outstanding instruction or mentorship. Additionally, I would once again like to acknowledge the members of the 2024 Women's Leadership Forum Planning Committee for their hundreds of hours developing, organizing, and preparing every detail of today's event, from coordinating the venue, identifying the speakers, designing and marketing the training platform, as well as logistics and execution. Without their attention to detail, today would not have been possible. In the coming days, you'll receive an email survey about today's event. You can also take the survey now by scanning the QR code in your folders. Last year's survey were instrumental in shaping the content of today's event. Please provide thoughtful feedback so future events can be even better. We will also be looking for volunteers to take the lead of a new planning committee team next year. Let us know if you're interested when you take the survey. Today's event has been an incredible opportunity to share with you all great lessons from our experts and provide you all tools to be part of joining the conversation. This concludes today's program. Thank you for attending and we look forward to seeing you next year.